Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, let's keep working on our UV mapping. Um, I think what I'd like to do is try and tackle this hand or this glove. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the mirror modifier for just a minute. And let's take a look at this. Um, I'll tab into edit mode and let's just try and figure out how we might do this. Um, what we want to do is try and hide seams as best as we can. Um, and I think maybe the inside of the glove here is probably a pretty good place to hide a seam. So maybe if we begin, say, here, and I'll control click this here, um, I think what I'll also do is select this point and also Alt Shift select that ring in there to break that out. We'll probably need that to extend on down though. So to isolate this glove on its own, I'm going to tab back into object mode and press Shift H. And that will isolate it so I can see it a little better. And now if I extend this edge down into here, so that'll break this out and split it along there as well. All right, so we've got that so far. I'll press Control E and mark a seam. Now, I don't think I want a seam coming along the outside or the top of the thumb because that's the front of the character and I'm afraid that that's going to be a little too visible. So maybe if I come around here to the back and select this point and control click this point right here and add that edge. And then if I select this point and then control click, say this point right here, and that'll extend that. Then control click this, control click this, and then control click this. And that will extend that edge all the way around, splitting the fingers like that. And now control E and mark seam. I'll go back to my UV editing screen layout and I'll go ahead and select everything. Let me frame it up with the period key. And then I'll press U and unwrap. All right, so you can see kind of what it's done here. It's split it at the thumb, and then split in half the top and the bottom of the fingers as well. So is that going to be acceptable? Let's take a look. I'll come over here to my node editor window and pull down the material menu and select that UV test material and of course come over here and change that to texture. Now let's take a look at it. That's actually not too bad. Um, the fingers are a little stretched here. That's to be expected I think. The thumb as well. You can see how there's some stretching there. But generally speaking, that's not too bad. Let's try it again. And this time I'll press U and unwrap. And let's change it from angle base to conformal and see if that helps at all. No, it really doesn't. Um, look at how stretched those fingers are now. So that's not the best scenario for this particular object. I'll go back to angle based. And yeah, I think that's going to work okay for those. So let's go back to the default view. Let's turn the mirror modifier back on. And I'll press Alt-H to bring everything else back. I feel like the thumb, the UVs for the thumb, are a little too stretched there. That may be something we need to work on. So, all right, let's go back to the UV editing screen layout. Let's go ahead and select this. One thing we could do is maybe pin this and maybe let's pin some other points all the way around here as well. So maybe I'll press, I'll select these points on each of the fingers like this and press the P key. And now if we just select that one point and hit the G key and move, we can kind of stretch this around to get maybe a little bit different layout it's possible or we could even come in and add a couple of points say here and here and pin those and now let's select that and let's see how this works so we can maybe stretch that out a bit yeah so that 
I think helps a little bit, so it isn't quite so stretched there. In addition, what we could do is we could come back here and we could try and minimize the stretch. If I press Control and click and drag a lasso around those points, and then come up to the UVs menu and I can choose this Minimize Stretch. Now I can use the plus and minus keys here to try and reduce the amount of stretching that's happening in there. So maybe like that and click and then take another look at that. So that's a little better I think. So between pinning points and minimizing stretch you can go a long way to fixing small problems like that. All right. Let's take a look at the boots now. I'm going to select the boots and zoom into them here. And these are separate pieces, of course. If you recall, we kind of did this in pieces. So what I can do is hover over one area or one piece and press the L key and that will select that. And recall that this is an object that has no thickness to it. So if I press Shift H, we can come in here and see that it has no thickness to it, which is good. What we can do is maybe select an edge here all the way back here and split it along the back. So let's press Control E and mark a seam. And then if we select this and press U and unwrap, here's what we get. Let's add a test pattern to that and take a look. All right, not too bad. Let's also once again try a different method. We have angle base currently. Let's try conformal. See if that helps any. I don't think that really helps. I'll go back to angle based. I like this a little bit better. All right. I'll press Alt H to bring those back and let's uh, try another piece. How about this piece here? I'll press the L key, U, unwrap. Looks good to me. I'll press the L key for this piece and I'll split it out. I'll uh, split the seam out right down here. I'll select that, mark a seam, and select it with the L key. U and unwrap. All right. How about this piece right here? Let's press Shift H and take a look at that. This one I think is also going to have to be split at least down the back. So I'll mark a seam here, select it all, and let's see how it looks. Okay, not bad. Alt H to bring everything else back. And let's select this piece. I think we can just unwrap this as it is. There we go. Not too bad. And let's select this piece. Let's press Shift H to isolate it. And how do we want to do this? We should probably split this out right back here. At this point. At this edge. And also split it out down here along this edge as well. Let's see how this works. I'll mark a seam and unwrap it. Might just work. All right. So now we've got the boots all UV mapped, but you can tell they're a little bit different size by the differing size of the checker patterns. So what let's do is let's bring everything back with Alt-H in edit mode and select all those pieces. Now over here, we can press Control-A to average island scales. And now you can see that all of those checkers are about the same size and that's good. And then I can press Control-P and that will pack them all into the zero to one space. Now we didn't have to do that currently, but that's just so we can see how it looks. Now, I didn't grab these here. I'll need to do that. And also, we've got the belt and the buckle, as well as the little doohickey on the head to do. We'll work on those in the next video, as well as UV mapping the eyes. So thanks for watching. I'll see you then. 
Blender fans assemble. It's time to create Captain America's motorcycle using hard surface modeling techniques in Blender. In this online course, you'll learn the tools and processes of modeling a complex, realistic vehicle. We'll use reference images taken of the motorcycle from the first Captain America movie on display at the Harley Davidson Museum. We'll build the bike up from the frame, assembling each piece using different Blender tools along the way. And we'll even go over setting up materials and lighting for a final render. This course is available at Blender101.com, where you'll also get my Blender Scene Creation course, the course that takes you through the entire process of creating an animated scene in Blender from the first polygon to the final rendered movie. And if you're just starting out with Blender, you'll also get the course Blender 101 Introduction to 3D Modeling, an in-depth course that covers the fundamentals of modeling in Blender. And at Blender101.com, you get new courses and projects every month. So join me as we create Captain America's motorcycle at Blender101.com. It's Blender for everyone. <laughs>